Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and whoever else may be listening. Children, dogs, cats, whoever's there. Um, Mark Robinson, here again, your host with the most over at Wear Many Hats. Um, as ever, please like, share, and follow the podcast on LinkedIn. Um, we love bringing this content to you, but obviously we want to make sure you're listening to it. Um, so please like and share whatever we create. Uh, fantastic episode here for you today. Um, I'm sat with Alex McCann, who is the Senior Facilities Manager of Informer. Hello, Alex. How are you doing? Hello, I'm good, thanks. Good you having a good here. day? It's been a good day. Yeah, yeah. not too bad. Thanks. Have you come far? Uh, we're based in, well, my office is in Blackfriars, where I came from today. So oh, it's okay. uh, actually quite a nice walk. Yeah? yeah? How long did it take you? Oh, Half an hour. That's not bad. The weather's been all right as well, hasn't it? It was starting to rain as I uh, was getting here, but yeah. uh, I don't know if you caught the rain uh, on your way in as well. Just, yeah, yes. only a little. Just only spitting. Little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that's... that's British weather. We're in that mad month, aren't we, where it doesn't know what it wants to it's be. It's way colder than it should be. I know. At the moment. I know, yeah, it is really cold. I feel like we had one day of summer and then it's, uh, you know, is that pessimistic? It's, uh, we haven't had a summer like since COVID, have we? Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. The only summer we had was lockdown and that, you know. That first Yeah, that lockdown first lockdown. Summer, yeah. yeah, and then after that, it's just been crap. It's just crap, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, um, my, gra- my garden's really long, can't cut it, it's too wet, you know, it's not good, it's not good. <laughs> well, listen, Alec, thank you very much for joining us um, and, and thank you for um, taking the time to come and collaborate with us on this podcast. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself first, you know, I know that obviously you did a degree, tell us a little bit about that and tell us how you came into facilities management. Yeah, I uh, did a, I went to Winchester University and, and studied drama. And yep. uh, uh, that was a, you know, very standard gateway into facilities management. As we yep. all know, if you study drama, FMZ. A- exactly. Oh. We should link you into Frank Osborne and you two could write, direct yes. and pr- produce a film together yeah. all about yeah. FM. I feel like he would be better at all of those. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll be there. I'll help him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you could just be, you could be the lead. You I'll be the, the zombie lead. in his movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be the zombie yeah, in his movie. Just, Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, no, that was... That was um, what I did at university and uh, uh, came out and had a couple of jobs in that world. Yeah. A couple of uh, theatre uh, companies, but um, it was, you know, it, I wasn't kind of getting the work that I wanted and I wanted yep. to do a little bit of acting for a while. Uh, and I did um, sort of have a career high uh, early on as well. As uh, Tell Darth, us all about it. Darth Vader. Darth Vader. In, well, look, you've, in, you've made it then, haven't you? Yeah, you know? I thought, what's the point in carrying on? Exactly. Yeah, you, uh, once you've played that, it's iconic. Yeah. You know? There's nowhere to go. Uh, that, it's like getting James Bond, isn't it? I, I, importantly, I wasn't Darth yeah. Vader in any films or in any real sense. It was <laughs> in a, in a uh, Star Wars stunt show at Chessington World of Adventures. So that's that's my claim to fame. At least you got an opportunity to scare loads of children. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got every every day, three times, four times a day, <laughs> being defeated by young Padawans uh, on the stage uh, with some plastic lightsabers. So that, that, was, um, that was really good fun. Uh, yeah. But then I uh, had an opportunity to... Uh, go and work in Sony PlayStation just as a Christmas temp. Wow. Uh, for uh, It was supposed to be just for a couple of weeks, but the um, it just carried on week by week. Yeah. And um, after about a year, uh, they, they turned around and said, look, this is getting a bit silly, Alex. Why don't we make yeah. you permanent? Uh, yeah. Formerly part of the team. And so I... Um, Spent a few years at Sony PlayStation, uh, they're based in Oxford Circus. And you started as a facilities administrator? Uh, assistant. Assistant. First, and then uh, I had a few different job roles there, right. administrator and supervisor, Right before I left. Yeah. And um, yeah, then that was, uh, I had the opportunity to go and work at Samsung uh, R&D Institute, which is based over in Sunny Staines. I bet that was cool. Uh, was cool because it was all R and D. It was so all the technology, uh, any marketing, really. Or, um, you know, uh, they had some small HR and finance, but it was all, yeah. it all focused on the R and D development. Yeah. Um, and actually, interestingly, at the time, it, we were all using mobile phones with three G. Uh, but yeah. At the time, we were um, well, they, not me, I wasn't involved, but the, yeah. they were they were looking at five G technologies at that time. Really. And you know, had all these sample. Phones and, and that was back in 2013. Yeah. Wow. It was early on. Wow. So that technology has been here for a long time. Then yeah. it's what, what, what I understand is it's not new technologies, and I could be wrong. So I'm, maybe one of your listeners will go tell you know email me and, and, and tell us I'm wrong. But I have no idea. I just thought it works. I, I think <laughs> they're they're old 
radio and TV. Really? Yeah, so it's where they've right. had... So it's actually been around for a long time. Signals that have been sunsetted, they're, they're redeployed. In these uh, ways, I might be wrong, but that's okay. how I understood it at the time. Yeah, but that's, that's interesting, it. even though. Yeah, no, it was, it was a great place to work, and um, you know, going from a Japanese company to a South Korean company was a, a, a nice experience. Yeah, as well. Are they different? Do, do they, they different? They were, well, so, actually, you know, I say Japanese company. Sony was a bit more, at least. You know, I was working in the European head office, so we're a bit more Westernized, Americanized. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the processes um, and procedures, but. Uh, Samsung was very much more, um, I don't know, it felt like there was a family focus. It, oh, really? It was a lot more um, effort to, uh, you know, we all went for monthly team lunch. Yeah. It wasn't just our team, but all of the service teams, you know, we'd all make sure we go out. So there was a heavier was a focus on events, people. Summer, summer events. Yeah. And, you know, and okay. yeah, so there, there was a bit more of that, whereas I guess at Sony it was a bit more... Um, we're launching this game, you know, yeah. and get all the. It's, we're going to have a great party, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so that was uh, that was a really good experience at Samsung, and, and that was as a facilities officer, and then you then made yeah. move into your first facilities manager role, correct? And yeah, that was at at Warner Music, right? Yeah, so moved across to Warner Music, um, and yeah, so there we had a couple of buildings in Kensington where I looked after majority of the hard services and yeah. had one or two people uh, in my team. Right. Um, and it is the music industry, so it has its, uh, you know, Ups and of excitement. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, lots, a lot going on. And, um, you know, at, at the time as well, I think streaming was just, um, it was there, but it was still yeah. getting traction. And I think uh, Warner was at that time really trying to get on the front foot with streaming and yeah. make it a core direction of the business yeah. um, rather than focusing on CDs and, and vinyl. And, you know, vinyl's great. It hasn't really gone away. Yeah. Um, but what's happened to CDs? Oh, yeah, of so course, I yeah. think then the the, the CEO um, realised that the future was in streaming. And yeah, of course, yeah. The, business towards the that. technology that killed Blockbuster, as I always indeed, say. Indeed, indeed, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And gave rise to uh, yes. these mega yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. companies, streaming companies. Well, everybody's got a streaming company now, don't they? All of the larger media organisations have some kind of channel for streaming yeah. movies and things like that. No. I won't say what Ricky Gervais said, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, it's probably not, uh, <laughs> not for now. No, 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 no. So, no, that was really good. Um, really uh, had a, a great experience working there. Lots of stories I mm. probably can't tell. Yeah, and then uh, you can tell us later, maybe later. Yeah, when we're off air. Um, yeah, and then uh, I had the opportunity to go and try my hand at the service provider side. Yeah, and join the the big green machine CBRE. Yeah, but again, keeping I suppose in in the technology media space. Yeah, so Snapchat and Uber. I mean, yeah, that, that must have been because I'm guessing they were they were kind of growing businesses then as well. So that must have been really yeah. Uh, you know, they're well well-known brands mm. um i think they're probably bigger today than they were then though yeah. and uh, you know snapchat was a really interesting experience we had two offices in central london um which i kind of flitted between right and um yeah just kind of an interesting experience american young technology company yeah um really kind of hungry to grow and of interesting what was important to that company so important to warner would be you know record sales and street yeah 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 important to samsung would be number of phones sold tv yeah. sold and same you know with uh with, with sony as well but for for snapchat it was um active users yeah you know how many people are actually just sitting on a platform going every day yeah and um so that's quite quite interesting insight and uh, yeah, had a great uh, great time there. Uh, met a lot of cool people, and then I had the opportunity to go to my first regional role, which yeah. was on the CBRE Uber account, where I looked after Northeast Europe. Yeah, and um, so your first EMEA role, really, as well. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, North, Northeast yeah. Europe. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one of the, I, I guess, I mean, that was a whole different experience. But the the biggest learning curve and the best thing about it was. Uh, getting to manage a team with so many great people in it yep. um, across some different geographies and a few different time zones uh, yeah, yeah. and bits and pieces like that. Was that challenging? Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very challenging. I hadn't done it quite like that before. Yeah. You know, I'd had maybe um, some peers in Paris or, or somewhere else, but 
that was really, you know, uh, had a um, uh, a manager at the time who just took a chance on me um, and yeah. um, said he was based in Amsterdam as well. So it was really kind of, uh, you, you're you going to be based in London looking after Northeast Europe. And I had some peers then looking after Southwest Europe and uh, right, okay. here in, in Middle East and Africa. And um, yeah, having suddenly having that uh, a bit more oversight, a bit more of a strategic view on, yeah. on what was going on. More responsibility, more yeah, yeah, responsibility, yeah, yeah. and um, you know, as I said, getting to to work with people from different backgrounds that I wouldn't have had a chance to work with yeah. before um, in in all of these um, European countries. So yeah, really good experience. And now I am at Informa, which right. is a really exciting place to be. Mm. Um, and you're actually the senior FM there, aren't you, for Amir and APAC? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's it's been a um, uh, a really good um, step for me in terms of my own growth and, and directions yeah, and uh, having the opportunity to look after not just Amir, but have a little bit of a yeah. back experience as well. Um, it, you know, I'm learning now it means some pretty early morning calls yeah, uh, yeah. sometimes. Two, but two o'clock, two o'clock team, uh, teams meetings. Two yeah, so, yeah. Actually, you know, I try and, you know, uh, so I've got a, uh, a team member in Singapore. So, uh, you know, we try and connect early in the morning. Yeah, of course. Uh, not too early, not for me, not too late for her, but yeah. know, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, of course. And, um, yeah, so it's, it brings its own challenges um, with, again, different geographies, time zones, currencies, yeah. languages. Yeah. Uh, but um, all good challenges to have. But a very interesting career trajectory. So, uh, you know, you can, you can kind of see how you've built skill upon skill over that period of time to then, you know, be in the role that you're in now. Yeah, I've um, been I've been very, very lucky, though, and um, had a lot of opportunities come my way. Yeah. And, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, you know, I hope I've been able to build my uh, skill set up. Yeah. For me, learning and development never stops. Um, it's, you know, I, I said earlier, one of the things that interests me most is... Um, getting to work with people yep. um, and uh, you know, this, in this role now I'm able to really kind of, I've got a broad range of people to get to work with and yeah. that whole learning and development piece is really important. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, so going back like over the sort of the earlier part of your career, did, did you find that, that there was any mentors as you progressed that were important to your development or took a chance on you or went, do you know, I think he's got a little bit more about him. We can, we can do something with him. Was, has that been a factor? Yeah, there's definitely so many people I've learned from. Yeah. And um, I've never really had anyone as a, a formal coach or a formal mentor, but some people have acted in that capacity without yeah. either of us really knowing it, I think, right. at the time. Uh, so I've been I've been very fortunate in that uh, respect. But, yeah, my, my FM at Sony... There's a guy called Stephen Wilson who really, you know, I learned so much from. Yep. Not just from a FM delivery perspective, I would say, but um, also a lot around just how to be as yeah. a person in a, uh, how to be a professional uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a business, how to act um, in challenging situations. Um he was always very calm and collected. Yeah. Um, you, you could always rely on him to think about what he was going to say right before, uh, before he would uh, respond to something. So yeah. Yeah. Stephen, I learned a lot from Stephen and actually had a, a opportunity to work again with him um, at Snatch Up for a, a small period of time. That's cool. Um, yeah. So that was a really exciting, you know, uh, um, thing to, uh, thing to happen and, and just, you know, have that opportunity to catch up uh, with each yeah. other as well. Well, he must have quite enjoyed seeing how your career had progressed as oh, well, so. given that, yeah. um, given that you know where you were compared to where you were when you worked with him originally. Yeah, I think you know we're all on our own journey. And, yep. um Yeah, just you know, I, I don't think I've ever told him before that you know I've, I've learned a lot from him. So hopefully he's <laughs> going to hear. You know, there you go, there you go, go, there you go, Steve. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's he's uh, just a super nice guy. Um, okay. Who else? I, I also at uh, Snapchat. Um, was a uh, my manager at the time was a lady called Michelle right. Middleton, um, right. who's actually she's Australian. She's moved back to Australia now, Hi. but um, uh, she was just absolutely fantastic, really supportive, yeah, uh, really fun. Uh, uh, you know, uh, worked hard, played hard, um, really delivered, 
Uh, That's what work should be, though. It should be fun, shouldn't it? it, should be, it should you spend be. a lot of time doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you spend so much time with with your peers. You want to have fun. You want to have uh, um, you know a good time. But uh, no, she she really stands out as somebody who I learned a lot from. And um, you know, when your um, service provider side part of yeah. what you need to uh, make sure you're doing is keeping your client happy. Yes, um, and. That was one thing she really excelled at, just being really engaging and full of energy. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if Michelle, if you're listening to this, uh, thank you as well. Oh, fantastic. Uh, I, I learned a lot from you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, let's talk a little bit about sort of networks and networking. Yeah, um, I'm really bad at that. Are you? But, yeah. But, yeah. I, mean, I mean, it sounds to me like you've been building a network throughout your career anyway, but when you mention people like Michelle, Steve, and things like that, do, have you, do you think you've kind of done that um, without realising that you were doing it? And, and Because it's obviously benefited you. I've, I, I suppose I do have a network in the sense that I've worked with people and, um, you know, I've enjoyed working with many people and yeah. still connected in, in various ways. Yeah. But I'm really bad at networking. Right, and okay. I've actually, historically speaking, I've always tried to avoid it. Um, yeah. Not because I didn't see the value of it, but really just I didn't feel like I wanted to go and sell myself and try and um, mingle or anything. I thought if I was going to... Um, have a, rel- a relationship with somebody, yeah. a work relationship or an intellectual relationship with somebody, yeah, yeah. That, that would just come naturally from having worked together, be a reason that we're brought together on a project or something. And that's, and that's I suppose, you know, my, yeah, my work um, as it stands. But I do see the value of yeah. more, let's call it more formal networking. Um, and I'm trying to get into that a bit yeah. more now, and I'm encouraging my team to do more of that as well. Oh, fantastic! So, is this is this um, is, is like what we're doing now in terms of the podcast? Is this quite out of the box for you? It's quite unusual. It's not really something that you would generally do. Definitely not something I generally do. And, right. And uh, actually, I was saying to Ethan earlier, I think it's quite a niche uh, thing, and I think yeah. it's a really interesting thing that you've got um, you've got going in this uh, this this project you're working on. Yeah. Um. And I think this is different to some of those standard networking yeah. type uh, events as well. Uh, you know, you get a, a speaker. Yep. Uh, there's a bit of mingling with a few drinks afterwards. And they, they have their place. And, yes. And they, as I said, you know, I need to get better at yep. going to those and engaging more with with peers across the business. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I think this is, you know, speaking about the modern world and yeah. you know, some of the streaming services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things yeah. like that. And, and, you know, this this is this feels like a natural um evolution of that it's a different dynamic isn't it yeah i suppose and, that, and that's, that's good yeah. different medium to be fair but then you know i think um you know a podcast is a really interesting um uh idea uh, because it's a bit like a radio show yeah um uh, it's a bit like just having people in your in your front room uh, that yeah. you're, you know you're chatting to so it's a bit of a, a, a mixture it is i think if you'd have said to somebody 20 years ago People are going to love this podcast format. People are going, why? They've got the radio. Yeah, you know, I, I really do. I think, but like, it, it, it people, it does interest people. Same, same with the the explosion of YouTube. Everyone yeah. making their own content. Yeah, um, and actually, traditional media is struggling. And yeah, there's there's a lot more content out there that people and people are getting very good at making that content. But I, I would probably say that what was legacy media, like the media that you, I don't think it is the the leading media anymore no. i think you know streaming podcasts um content creation has kind of taken over that so the, the world is very very different um it's a different space that's what it used to be and i think there's a bit of catching up or trying to catch up yes uh, going on from the traditional media yeah outlets um and they have their place you know i hope they don't go anywhere there's a whole debate around the, the tv license in this country yes people people some people are happy to pay it some people aren't but yeah. um Everybody I know has one or more streaming services that they're happily paying for. Yeah. Um, and they don't watch all the content on there. No. You know, they, they watch a little bits and pieces. I think I, I think the, the TV, it's a bit of a funny one, the TV licence, isn't it? Because I think people are like, well, I don't want to do it just because the government tells me I have to. You know, so I think there's a little mm. bit of that in the, you know, we're supposed to be free. How can being your choice? You know, we already have to pay rates, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm already paying. And the only another thing tax. That, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm already paying. The only thing that happens is I get my bins emptied once every fortnight, yeah. you know. Yeah. Plus, send me this little circle with the police and the firemen, but I'll never use them. Yeah. But, but actually, <laughs> let's get Disney Plus and Netflix yeah. and uh, yeah, exactly. Paramount Plus exactly. and Spotify. And, yeah. Yeah, all yeah. Of yeah. No, I do. I completely get it. It's a really interesting, it's actually a very interesting argument, actually, because I, I didn't really think about it like that, that, well, you'll pay for all this, but you don't want to pay for that. But it's just that, you know, 
I think it's the threat of jail and someone will bang on your door. Do you know what I mean? Like, how dare you come to my house? And, you know, so I I get it from there. I don't have a TV. What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't watch TV. I've got got a phone. Yeah. Yeah. I think you still need a TV license for that. I think you do. Only if you have the BBC iPlayer, I think. It's it's only BBC content, isn't it? So. Is it? No, I think no. it might be all TV, actually. I think it's if you have, it's any watching anything. Yeah. I, don't, I, look, I don't get involved. I, yeah. the, I, I pay it because, yeah. the, I mean, the wife is like, oh, we're not breaking anything. Yeah, my, my wife yeah, pays yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. try and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And every time I see you go out, I'm like, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like, I listen to a lot of radio, um, actually, so, so uh, yeah. that's where I get the value out uh, yeah. of that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> Okay, so um, look, we've gone way off kilter in terms of <laughs> facilities management, there, but that's fine. Um, what advice would you give to somebody um, that was interested in starting a career in facilities management? How, if if you would, you're starting again, you know everything you know now. How would you go about it? Um, I think that. So I mentioned earlier, for me, uh, education is really important. I know. I'm I'm clever enough, uh, enough to know that there's loads I don't know. Yes. And, uh, so I'm that self awareness is important. I think I think it's very important. Yeah, I, I think you know you you can hopefully be a little bit more humble in the in in the knowledge that you there's lots you don't know. Uh, yeah. You know, and there's other people <clears throat> who um, way more have way more expertise than you do. In yes. Uh, so coming into FM, uh, I would say. Just keep um, your education at the front of mind. Um, I think it can be easy to get. Um, well, everybody's different. For me, I wouldn't like to get uh, necessarily stuck in doing the same thing every day. Yeah. Uh, I think the beauty of FM uh, is that it's different every day and uh, we have a lot of different challenges. That's the great thing about it. Fresh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and enjoyable for me anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would definitely promote that side that every day is different. There's loads to get involved in from security, cleaning, catering, uh, MEP services. Yeah. Um, if you, if you are a people manager, uh, there's a whole host of, um, really exciting areas where you can help and grow and yeah. develop people uh, on their journey uh, yeah. in, in the career. So well, it's yeah. not just that as well. You've got finance, payroll, you know. Yeah, there's well, a lot of piece we don't talk about. No, 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 uh, no, 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 no. We've got to give them a bit of juice every now and then. You know what I mean? <laughs> they do pay the bills. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's I, I would just say it's a wide open world. Uh, there are so many, you know, my, my career path has been one of mostly technology and media companies uh for me that's been really interesting i've had the opportunity to work in a number of companies where it's been you know uh, i've seen the odd celebrity uh, uh flying around of uh, anything you can tell us or uh, <laughs> no, uh i wouldn't like to say yeah uh, but no there's been a few th- you know i saw uh warner there are a few artists yeah um, uh, that's you know that's the environment is um for me always made it worth it so yeah environment and the people mm. um and i think in fm you have the opportunity to um uh experience uh if, if you want to uh, you can experience different companies and meet lots of different people uh, yeah on your journey so i think the great thing about fm which a lot of people probably wouldn't realize um if they're new to it or they haven't come across it before is that if you're a business of a certain size there's a requirement for facilities management so no matter the industry no matter the sector um no matter where the business is located if it's of a certain size then there's a requirement for some kind of facilities management it's it's what Um, i I always say to you know everyone's like oh you meet somebody new what do you do i'm like oh i work in facilities management and the next question is yeah, where? what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. What's that? Yeah, and uh, and and very often, you know, one way I, I can explain it is like, well, in most offices around the world, yeah. there'll be somebody like me, yeah, um, at keeping the lights on, yeah, um, making sure it's comfortable uh, for you, and um, making sure the the toilets work, and uh, yeah. that you know, this it's a secure environment and all those things. Yeah, and a good career path. And yeah. um, what's quite interesting, you know, if you want to work in technology, you want to work in finance, you want to work in the arts, you want to work in theatre, you want to work in banking, you know, anything like that, there will be some kind of facilities management. In the background. Uh, yeah, across keep, all of those sectors, yep. keeping everything ticking over. Yep. So if you wanted to operate in a specific sector, you know, you could even go down that route, right? Yeah. You know, I want to go and get a facilities management, um, you know, um, 
um, I've lost me. Accreditation. Accreditation, yeah. Yeah. some kind of certification, things like that. Start off somewhere and then, you know, you could work towards working in, you know, similar places that, that you've worked, such as the, the music industry, the technology industry. Yeah. You know, you could go down that route. Well, my, my uh, you know, I was very lucky. I just had an opportunity to go and um, uh, work in, in a company. It, it could have been at any company really at that time. It yeah. was just, it, you know, the, the planets aligned and I, you know, I had sort of... And it was Sony. Uh, yeah. And so I had, you know, I thought, wow, go go and work at PlayStation. Yeah. How much fun that could be. Uh, and it was. I'll uh, get FIFA before anyone else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there are a few <laughs> few games uh, yeah, yeah, flying yeah. around. Do you want to test these? Give us a bit of feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mind. Go on, then. If I have to. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I'd say that, like, you know, to your point, there are um, every every organization will have somebody uh, yeah. uh like us and uh if you if there's an area that you really have an interest in probably yeah. they'll be looking for somebody like you exactly and the way to spot us is is the person that has pictures of toilets on their phones that's the reality yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. How, many, how many toilets have you taken a picture of this on carpets stains or, on carpets yeah, yeah, yeah broken yeah. chairs broken chairs yeah 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 Broken pipes, anything, yeah. anything to do with a building that looks like, why have you got that on your phone? Yeah. yeah well, you're an FM. There you go. <laughs> That's you true. Know? Okay, so um, how do you um, stay up to date with new developments and trends in, in the industry? How do, you, how do you maintain that level of, you know professionalism well i don't go to enough networking events that's for sure at least you have bits so yeah, yeah so I, I that's my um i've heard there's one taking place resolution. i've heard there's one t- taking place this week is there i have heard oh, that yeah yeah, 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 tell yeah. Me more. Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you i'll tell you i'll tell you after the show <laughs> <laughs> um yeah you know i i try to so podcasts are a really new exciting way to do that so yep. you know credit where credit's due guys um, it doesn't work unless people like you come on it, to be quite frank, Alex. So, well, it's very humbling you know, to be invited, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's there's a whole, you're sort of tickling my, my ego. Uh, just oh, fantastic. The, the invitation. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, but uh, no, we. I mean, there's IWFM, Facilitate Magazine, yeah. um, Facilities Management Journal. Yeah. So do you subscribe to the newsletters for a lot of those organisations so that you're aware of new technology, yeah. new trends, new things? Yeah, down yeah absolutely. I mean, yeah. we... We need to stay um, stay ahead of the curve in the in the sense of seeing what's coming down the line from technology changes. Um, there could be legislation changes, and you're not always going to have your ear to the ground no. um, uh, for those p- bits and pieces. So it's important. I think it's important um, to to try and gather that information. I don't always get a chance to read all these things when they come in. No. Um, and at, at home, I've got you know a, a smallish stack of uh, yeah. you know these publications. Speed read. <laughs> you know, look through, but, um, you know, I think they are important. They're, they're worthwhile for the memberships. Um, okay. And again, they also provide you with that uh, opportunity to to network, which I need to do more of. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. We'll help you out with that this week. <laughs> <laughs> as long as the wife says it's all right. Yes, I need to check. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, brilliant. Well, look, I mean, obviously you've worked in some technologies businesses. You've worked in quite what I would say, uh, you know, the organizations that are at the forefront of technology. Um, how do you think artificial intelligence will play a part in facilities management over the next five years? Do, do you see it doing anything, changing anything? I, I think the whole subject of artificial intelligence is, uh, for me, a little bit scary in the sense that I just don't understand what it means, Yeah, truthfully. And, um, you know, from, an, from a maybe not necessarily an FM perspective, because we already have... Yes. Yep. Systems, CAFM systems. So we we already have tools with which to gather data. I think yep. maybe AI tools can be used to analyze that data for us, so that we don't have to and give us two or three different options. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Proceed. But but it always depends on the of the data going in. This so, is true. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, I think there's a, a phrase, garbage in, garbage out. If yeah, you yeah. garbage in, you're just going to get garbage out again. Yeah. Um, so I, I wonder how um, how much of an impact AI will make specifically in the FM domain. Yeah. In the wider real estate domain, it might have a bit of an impact in terms of maybe in the sustainability piece uh, where, you know, I read somewhere recently that the um, – AI might be able to massively increase the production of batteries um, oh, really? and um, the design of batteries and things like this so that, you know, we've already got 
the power walls and things like that, but they're more for, for homes of smaller scale. So mm. really kind of ballooning that idea might be interesting if AI can support that. And So you get to a point where there's less loss from from the battery yeah, and the trans- by, by transmission. Energy at a, a cheaper rate or... Sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah. Um, or, or, you know, if you're able to generate, if you've got solar panels on your building, uh, storing that. And so, th- you know, I think that there's probable um, benefits there. Uh, I think we need to... In FM, we wear many hats, to coin a phrase. So yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, well done for getting it in there. Got it in, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think um, there's a security element that I, I, I saw some time ago that um, you can buy buy now a fair finger, right? Bear with me. Uh, and you, you kind of wear it on your hand. And if you've committed a crime, you commit a crime wearing the spare thing, you've got six fingers on, right? Sure. Um, if you're captured on CCTV and you go to court, you can claim that image of you is AI generated because I don't have six fingers. <laughs> I've got five. Well, so it's probably a very basic uh, way of trying to get around it. But I think it illustrates that there probably are security implications that AI um, provides that we haven't maybe quite thought about. Yeah, I was watching um, I was watching a documentary the other day. Um, and not a documentary, sorry, a podcast actually, quite interestingly. Joe Rogan. Yep. Um, I watched Joe Rogan a bit. And he was chatting to his guest about AI. Mm. Um, and, and they were then comparing AI to the Otten bomb. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And his guest was saying, we just need to turn it off bomb the data centers because it's a threat to humanity and i'm like wow that's a bit extreme do you know what i mean but like it's i can't it, stop thinking about terminator though no i need to that's the other part yeah, it? yeah like, just just one day you're in the street and then bosh like loads of t-1000s come walking down with a big gun and you're like oh yeah. god get to Here the chopper yeah, get, yeah. get to the chopper <laughs> yeah. oh, fair enough well hopefully fingers crossed that doesn't happen to be fair um, and obviously ESG, so yeah. environmental, social, governance. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing that's very important in the industries that you a, operated in and the one that you operate in now. Yeah. Um, how do you think that that will impact decisions moving forward in facilities management? Uh, it's, it's a good question. I, I think, you know, there are uh, the environmental, for me, the environmental piece um, is critical. We in FM have an opportunity to, I think since COVID, we've had uh, more uh, credit in the boardroom is one way to put it. Uh, yeah. We have a voice at the table. Um, I think that's been, Which is that's good. been evidenced. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We're, we're a bit more visible in, in most organisations. And I think we have an op- uh, opportunity and um, uh, we have an opportunity to really use that voice to push that, uh, that uh, environmental agenda. Uh, I think a lot of companies are already doing that anyway. Um, Informer's really great uh, yeah. at it. Um, we we have uh, a program called Fast Forward, which really um, is trying to embed sustainability in everything we right. do in the business yeah. um, across across the entire business. And we've got some pretty lofty uh, but achievable goals uh, yeah. um, around it, halving waste by next year, 2025. Uh, yeah. um, and... Um, eliminating waste from our business and events um, yeah. and uh, things by by 2030 i think so right um so i think there's as long as there's uh, a willingness from the top of an organization it can it can have a big impact um, yeah. in environment and there's only one we've only got one planet this is true this is this is all we've got unless elon gets his way unless elon gets his way but is yeah. he taking you and me no no, probably not. Ten the other billionaire. He might send you first to see what's <laughs> yeah, like. It's just the planet. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're not going next. Yeah. Uh, so Alex, <laughs> you're yeah. But welcome to Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's there. Don't worry. Yeah, he's uh, okay. We just can't talk to him, but he's fine. Yeah, he's, he's probably fine. Um, so yeah, I think uh, that for me is is critical. Uh, you know, we've we've both got young kids. Um, yeah. For, for me. So it's maybe a little bit cliche, but it's about what they, how they get to enjoy their experience of life on this planet, um, yep. and what you know, what we leave uh, for them. So anything I can do in my role to to push that forward, I will try to do. Um, yeah, of course, doing the right thing for the right reasons. Doing the right thing, and yeah. and doing the right thing from a social perspective as well. Yeah, I, I think a common sense good. approach to, to to things. Yeah. It's a good phrase, though. Yeah, doing the right thing. And yeah. 
I think it touches on a, a few of those areas. Um, the governance piece, obviously, that's putting frameworks and yes. policy procedure in place in all, to to allow your organisation to. to well, we're very good at that anyway. Do- I, th- I think the the industry FM across client side, you know, um, other organisations, we're very good at that. We do that very well. Yeah, I, and yeah, I think it's you know we're, we're good at putting. Um, works together and yep. rules together and bits and pieces yep. but um yeah the social the social bits hugely important uh you know we've got we've got one planet from the the environmental side um people have a different view but my, my view is we've got one life yes and uh you know this is it and um we have to be kind to each other and i think the <clears throat> the pandemic really underscored that the importance of being kind to one another and yeah. um and helping each other and um you know, looking out for one another and, yeah. uh, you know, we all need help from time to time. Yeah, we saw the best of humanity for about four weeks, didn't we? Well, the, the, during the toilet roll. Were people eating it? I mean, I just don't know where they, where they put all that toilet roll. It was comfortable to wrap <laughs> yourself in it. It was absolutely crazy, wasn't it, to be fair? Of all the things, uh, you would have think of food, uh, no, toilet roll. Yeah. Yeah. Bottles of water, no, that's fine. Yeah. Toilet roll, <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. It was just so surreal. Wasn't it? it was, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, so so for me, that the the, uh, the the social piece is important. I try to get involved where I can. You know, I'm a uh, for those who can't tell from the sound of my voice, I'm a, a white middle class heterosexual male. So right. I'm, I'm, you know, I've probably uh, uh, won the lottery in a lot of regards in terms of those social areas. So I, I, I recognize that and I do try to uh, get involved where I can in terms of, uh, you know, gender equality or, yep. uh, you know, any anything that I think maybe being an ally uh, yeah. in my position can can help with so well i, I, I mean let's I, I we shouldn't stick people in social group people are people true you, yeah. you know um yeah. just treat people as people Everybody, and i think yeah. you know once again the simplest answer is always the best yeah you know if it's a person sat in front of you it's a person doesn't matter what they look like just what they, human being. exactly do you know what i mean let's just get back to that the way two kids when they go in the nursery and they're seeing each other for the first time just run up to each other and go hey we you yeah you know? But then and, there's no and have a cuddle, uh, yeah, and uh, share yeah. what they're exactly. There's there's no there's no agenda. There's no nothing. It's just two kids, two three year olds. Who are you? What do you do? That's magic. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean. That's we, we've lost that somewhere along the way. I think so. Um, good that we're looking to get it back. Yeah, I think anything we can do, uh, you know, being thoughtful around it, being considerate of other people's, uh, and you, you know, there's a lot. Uh, we we spoke a, a little bit earlier. Um, I think before we started recording about mental health and yes. things like that. And, um, you know, a lot of these things are invisible. Uh, yeah, where, they are. Where we don't necessarily see them. So just being, creating environments where people can be themselves, can be comfortable to say, do you know what, um, you know, uh, I'm not feeling too good today. Uh, yeah. Then fantastic. You know, it's yeah. the more of that we can do, the better. Well, exactly. I mean, we're great advocates of that on the show. You know, we, you know, we, we truly believe that, you know, a lot of the things that are hidden, you know, should be supported and appropriately yeah. looked after. So, yeah. you know, we've got some interesting episodes coming up on that as well, actually. So I'm excited. You should, excited. You should wait to, to, to hear from them. Okay, so what do you see um, as being the, you know, the biggest opportunity and also slash challenge in facilities management in the next few years? Uh, you know, I, I, I think there are lots of opportunities if you look for them and if you're open to them. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, we there's a change going on for everybody in terms of um, flexible working, hybrid working. Yep. Um, for those who work in offices, uh, a lot of the time nowadays, uh, it's normal to work from home one or two, three days a week. Yep. Um, and I think that uh, is important. It gives people flexibility. Um, uh, we we all know what it can be like. Uh, Speaking as a parent, I know what yep. it can be like to be, you know, you can have a, a packed day where you've got loads of meetings, but still, if you're working from home, you can fit in some time to put the laundry on, Yes, you know, uh, tidy the kids' room, you yeah. know, just get a few things done that yeah. they don't have to wait till the end of the day when you're exhausted. Yeah. You know, you can quickly get them done. And it's not impacting on your ability to do your, your job or anything. So I think that's that's important. That should stay. I think you actually get more done at home because you're not, you, don't, you don't get distracted by anything. I, I, I mean, I've worked from home for years. Yeah. So even prior to the pandemic I mean I've, I've worked for home the last 15 years a mix of yeah. four days out on a ride at home one day in the office things like that yeah. um, and I've always found and I said this years ago that I get more done when I'm working from home because I'm just not 
um, distracted, nobody's talking to me, that nobody, yeah. you know. That's, it's, a, it's striking that balance though, isn't yeah. it? It's, and, uh, you know, the, we we want to encourage people to come into our offices, into yeah. our workspaces, because there's a huge amount to get from that. That uh, The social elements. The, so there's a the social element, but there, there's also uh, that you, you just, in terms of sitting in a meeting room with other people, you can, um, I think... You can't necessarily get that from meeting online. Uh, no, I do agree. Zoom, I mean, Zoom calls, Teams calls, and things like that. As soon as you switch off that, you know, you press leave on that button, your your mind is suddenly straight on yeah. the next thing. Whereas if you're in the office, you can you you leave the meeting and you might have another further thought. You can just chat about it, coffee, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I do agree with that. I, I, I mean that. Uh, I hadn't experienced Teams or Zoom meetings until the pandemic. Yeah, that's my But I do agree with that. You know, like, I, I do think that um, they're quite... Um, you don't get the same kind of... Like, me and you in a room right now, you know, I, I can sort of see your body language. I can see, exactly. you know, how you're it, reacting to a certain question. And sometimes we feed off that as human beings because yeah. we need it. And I think when you're online, although you can see the person, you can't see them all. You just see the shoulders. You just see the top of the head. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like that guy, do you remember, from the 80s with the weird background and the big blonde hair. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. Do you remember that guy? <laughs> it rings a bell, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just a head and shoulders and that's about it. It looked a bit like Johnny Bravo. Yes. You know the cartoon, Johnny yeah, Bravo. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, no, I completely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, no, I do get that completely. Okay, so, look, let, let, let's go on to sort of your career again. Let's focus particularly on you. Um, what would you say your greatest achievement in facilities management has been so far? That's a really hard question. I know. To, to, I know. Uh, <laughs> That's why we ask it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, and, you know, I think... Um, Lots of things that I could look back on and say, I think that worked really well. Projects I worked on and delivered, um, outs, uh, different bits and pieces. But mm. one of the things that I really enjoy in my role and have done as, as long as I've been a people manager is the opportunity to, to grow and develop people. And I'm real, a, a big advocate of that and finding ways to, it doesn't necessarily need to be through uh, courses and, uh, you know, sending somebody off for a, for a week to go and do Nibosh or something. It's, yeah. It can just be shadowing, can just be being in the room uh, while um, a conversation's happening, you know, and that, that's, you get it, you can learn a, a huge amount just, just yeah. being there and, um, and taking those, those people on that journey so that they can then take the step that yeah. they want to take next and grow and develop and, and go and get what they want to get out of their career. Um, so, biggest uh success if i can put it like that i suppose is really just where where i've been able to see that happening uh, yeah. and um you know the you shed a, a, a tear but it's yeah. a it's a good one because you're you know somebody you've worked with as, as you know people i've had people in my teams before where they're just really hungry to go and get it uh really want to learn really open to um uh being being trained and and having that um, that development piece, but you don't always get that. But when you do get that, it's a really amazing experience. When yeah. when and it's sad you, you're like, oh, I'm so sorry to see you go, but yeah. it's you, you're so happy for them when they do uh, go off and, and get yeah. that. It's like, what are your so, kids when they do something well? Yeah, or they actually in, do in, if they're told for once. Do you know what I mean? Well, does that happen? I've, not yet. <laughs> so I hear. I'm 14 years in. Not yet. So. <laughs> yeah. Still time. Yeah. Um, no. So that that's uh, when I've been able to see that. That's been one of the the great things, and I'd like to continue. Uh, okay. If I can. Is that, well, that the question? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great answer. You know. You know the fact that you. You know. I completely understand. You know. If you've gone on a journey with somebody, they've come into your team. Um, you know. You've 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 brought them forward. You've mentored them. Yeah. You know. You've they've achieved what they wanted to achieve as a direct result of the support that you've provided. Yeah. You know, that's fantastic. Fantastic. What a great thing to be proud of. And it's not career. its not anything that I can say I've done yeah. uh, other than uh, provide, not an expert in, in any one particular field, but providing that um, space, yeah. connecting the dots. Yeah. And do you know who's really good at um, yeah. PowerPoint presentations? Yeah, yeah. So go and Sometimes support and guidance is all people need. Yeah. And also someone believing in them. Um, I think I think that that's yeah. underrated. To be quite frank, you know, seeing something um, and it's, yeah, it's not all about money. It's not all about prestige. Sometimes it's just about somebody putting an arm around you and saying, "Do you know what? You could do that. This is how I think that we could bring you on." So no, it's really good. Okay, conversely, any regrets? Do you yeah. regret anything? 
Would you have done anything differently? Uh, no regrets. No? Uh, no, you know, I think um, I'm not somebody who really kind of reflects on the past and, um, you know, wishes I'd done something differently. Even if I've made mistakes uh, and had challenges, I've tried to tried to meet them. Uh, yeah. But I'm not always successful. That's okay. That's part of learning. And so you, you, you take it sometimes on the chin and... and yep. uh, learn from it and try again next time. Yep. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, well, what, one, one regret and it was, it was COVID caused. Uh, I did when I started my role in Uber, um, it's my first regional role, as I yeah. said, and, um, I had the, um, I, I should have taken the opportunity to go out to Vilnius in Lithuania, yeah. uh, where one of my team was and, the pandemic uh, changed all of that. So I didn't take the chance uh, to oh, really? and explore that part of the world when I had the chance. Right. Uh, and I've regretted it since. <laughs> Ooh, man, well, there's a summer holiday there, Alex. Well, exactly. Yeah. You know find I mean? another way. Find yeah. 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 Way. yeah. But, Get on uh, Ryanair, easy jet, cheap flight. Yeah. It's probably you go. Really easy to go. Yeah. I yeah. just, uh, just haven't, uh, haven't long weekend that. with a wife, time away for the children. Uh, yes. Yeah. Where do you, where do you put the children? <sighs> <laughs> it's about to be a box somewhere. Yeah, you know, under I mean, the stairs. Stick them in, you know, yeah. <laughs> leave them with a bit of food, and they'll be all right. <laughs> That's it, they'll be fine. Yeah. You know those dog cages? <laughs> <laughs> Just let them go feral for free. Yeah, so it like, uh, wouldn't be any yeah. less uh, or feral or more feral than they are now. Exactly, yeah. exactly. No, that's good. Okay, brilliant. Well, listen, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, what do you like to get up to outside of work? How do you relax? How do you departmentalize everything at the end of the week. Uh, I, uh, look, I've, I've got uh, two young kids now, a four-year-old and a two-year-old. They keep me very busy in my spare time, in inverted commas. Um, yeah. You should have way more grey hair, by the way, Alex. I have way more now than I had before yeah. they arrived. Uh, <laughs> so do I. So do I. <laughs> I think that's, but it's, you know, it's like a badge of honour, isn't it? Exactly, uh, exactly. But uh, no, they, they take up a lot of my time, uh, yeah. just having activities with them, um, a lot of park time, uh, which is good, lots of fresh yeah. air and things like that. Um, and I've got an amazing wife who um, really uh, gives me a, a huge amount of support uh, in order to um, build the role that I'm doing now, because there's quite a bit of... Uh, travel, there can be a bit of travel with my... Yeah, you did say, yeah, and obviously that, that has its own challenges as well, doesn't it? It yeah. does, because, you know, I'm relying on putting a burden on my wife to look after the kids full-time, mm. and, and uh, she's got her own job and her own yeah. career, and um, it's... So we, we're finding that balance, but it, you know, there's no demand from the business, so you have to be there at this time. It's very flexible, and yeah. you know, I can kind of figure it out. And But that's good, though. It gives you the ability to work around your family commitments. And, Absolutely, uh, yeah. and, you know, the the... The company uh, is, I think, good in that sense. But I've got a really great manager, uh, uh, Richard Bowers. Um, he he really um, just kind of gets it. Uh, yeah, you know, he's, he's got a family, and um, you know, wants he, he encourages that that balance of things. Um, so yeah, uh, but the kids take up a lot of time. Um, uh, play a bit of guitar, not as much as I used to. But, oh really? Uh, you know, a little bit of guitar. So dusting that off now that the kids are. What can you play? Uh, I could do a pretty good Johnny Cash impression. Actually. No way. Yeah. yeah. Which one? Well, pick Folsom Jet. <laughs> well, like, oh, okay. Folsom, yeah, no. Big, you know, so big fan of those. You're a big, like, a big yeah, I really got so. I love the man in black, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I used to. Um, uh, I go in went real well, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love a bit of it. No, I, I, uh, he, he did a, um, a cover of "Hurt" by Nine Inch Nails. That's one of my favourite songs. Ever. That's how I got into him. Uh, no way. I was like, what is that? What am I hearing? Yeah. Do you know who Johnny Cash is? <laughs> no, Ethan doesn't know. So, yeah, uh, but this, this, the song he's talking about, "Hurt," it is amazing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It literally is. It's, the, it's probably the best cover of a song. That, that I've ever heard in he, terms of a second person that he was he, he, amazing Trent Reznor who wrote it said that's yeah. not my song anymore yeah so, no he yeah, that's Johnny yeah, Johnny owns it he, he owns it now so uh, did he just after his wife died didn't, didn't he it was just after she uh, passed was it just before I'm trying to remember now when it came out and it, it, you know it was I'd never really discovered I, I guess I knew I was aware of yeah, yeah, movies yeah, yeah. or something but uh, anyway so I really fell in love uh, with that song and explored that yeah. artist and really got into it and learned a few songs. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of like a little uh, unknown. Uh, I don't broadcast that very much. So okay. Next time you're on, I'm we'll going to regret that. Next, no. next time you're on, we're going to bring you guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I charge you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crack on. You play it, I'll sing it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs>
This could evolve into a whole... Uh, whole we di- could be a Johnny Cash tribute act. We you know, be. we could be. You're going to be June Carter Cash then. Let's well, go. I've got the boobs for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and on that night... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, listen, Alex. That's the end of the show. How did you find it? Fun. Yeah, you enjoy thank it. Thank you so much. Yeah, really uh, great, great experience. Uh, really, real pleasure to be invited along. No, absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much for your time, and thank you for contributing to the podcast. Thanks very much. Right, oh guys, that's the end of another episode. Really interesting one. Um, you know, obviously, Alex walked us through his career. Um, you know, and I hope that you learned something from it. As ever, I'm sure Alex doesn't mind if anybody reaches out to him on LinkedIn to ask him any questions or ask him for any support functions. But that's the end of another show. We will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.